Hi, this is Outlaw Bookseller. Today I've decided to do a little clip about um, a writer who is currently a bestseller in the UK, who's become a bestseller in the last five years. And I wasn't sure whether to put this in the playlist for my stories from bookselling or into a genre playlist. And um, I considered popping it in the crime one because there is a crime connection. Though strictly speaking, the books that people will know by this author are espionage novels, thrillers. Um, so come what way, we'll pop it somewhere. I want to talk about um, the career of Mick Heron, um, who will be a familiar name to many and less to some. Mick Heron is probably Britain's premier espionage novelist now in the UK. He is enjoying enormous popularity, a huge cult has sprung up around him, and rightly so, because he's a very, very fine writer. He has the skill of a populist in hitting people with great characterization and great plotting, but at the same time, his writing is of a very high quality, very literary quality. You can see the influences of people like John le Carre, Evelyn Waugh, Graham Greene, Somerset Maugham even, I would say, all influence Heron's work. And I'm just going to talk about my interactions with Mick and with a particular book, which you may not have come across, even if you are a fan of his Jackson Lamb, aka Sl Slow House series. Well, a bit of history. I can't remember how I discovered Mick's work. It's probably because I have a tendency to follow publishers who I think are interesting. And um, one publisher I keep an eye on is Soho Crime, an American press, who does some fantastic work in international crime publishing. You can get some of their books in the UK, some you can't because of rights issues. And this is the um, US paperback of Slow Horses, which I picked up. It must have been probably around, let me see, when was it published? It was published initially by Constable in the UK, 2010. This is a first US paperback um, and it is rather coy about saying when it was published. But so I read this about, I think, 2011, no later than 2012. Um, and it's a marvellous book. If you don't know the series, do check them out. Slow Horses, the Slow House series, rebranded by their current publisher, John Murray as the Jackson Lamb series, which I think is a bit, bit misleading because they are ensemble cast books. And the idea of this is that, you know, you hear those stories now and again about somebody who works in intelligence and they leave a laptop on a train or a computer disc at a bus stop and you think, oh no, their career is over. And you have to feel sorry for them. And the Slough House series is about a group of misfit spies who have goofed up. They're all shifted to a little house in um, London where they are given these dreadful jobs transcribing phone conversations of possible terrorists and and they're really sidelined. So it's about British underdogs and every now and again they try and make a bit of a comeback um, and they're very funny, very well observed, ensemble cast as I say. So if you haven't read them, do. They're like a combination of the infighting that you get in Le Carre's classic um, Circus and George Smiley novels, but they've got the grit of Len Dayton. So they reform between those two, two stores and they're very funny as well. So I really recommend them if you've not come across them, check them out. Of course, loads of you will have read them because they are now bestsellers, as I say. And I was an early adopter. Uh, Mick had written several novels before that. And behind me on the shelf there, the, um, the paperbacks you can see, those are American paperbacks um, in Soho of his initial tetralogy, his first books the Zoe Bohm Oxford novels, which I think are his best novels. There's no humour in them, they're all serious, but they have ensemble casts, really good plotting, little Gordian knot stuff, and they have an elliptical structure. Some very interesting things happen in the first and last ones. The sort of things that don't happen much in crime, but would happen a lot in something like science fiction. So they really appeal to me because they have an unusual approach. There's also, right at the end there, um, and there's a copy of The List, and that is the world first edition of The List. Um, which is a Slough House novella. And um, they're all signed by Mick because we, we're mates and we've met um, several times over the years. So I was blown away by Slough Horses and um, then I absolutely love Dead Lions. Um, this is the um, Soho first edition of Dead Lions, the second novel. And the early ones focus quite a lot on the character called River Cartwright, who I really like, who is less represented in the later ones. Um, so these were great. I couldn't get a first edition of Slow Horses. I looked at some when they were still cheap now, because of course, Constable and Robinson, they mostly went to libraries and a lot of them are in an absolute state and now they fetch hundreds and hundreds of pounds and have done for a few years. So I was unlucky there. I've got firsts of all the rest. But 
what most people don't realize, and, and this isn't really sort of talked about by Mick, by John Murray, um, or the Wikipedia page is wrong as well, is that there is another Slough House book outside the series, which I find some people haven't read. And that is another Soho book. Um, and it's Nobody Walks. Now, Nobody Walks is a sidebar, a tangential novel, and it's set around Regent's Park and around the people who are um, in charge of the slow horses, um, but at a distance. And it introduces the slow house character, J.K. Coe. Um, but a lot of people haven't read this. It's not published by Murray. It's still published in paperback by Soho. And it's very dark. There isn't really any humour in it, um, but it's a fantastic book. I've read it twice. So once you've read Slow Horses and Deadlines, read this one next because it introduces J.K. Coe. So it is technically part of the Slow House Jackson Lamb series, even though characters like Jackson Lamb and um, Rear Cartwright and Roddy Holt don't appear in it. But it is part of the series because it shows you the dark stuff that goes on in the background um, and it features the dogs who come up in the um, Slough House books a lot, who are the security service, the internal police who keep an eye on everybody. So watch out for that one. Um, I first met Nick in 2016 and, and I've been pushing his books for quite a long time um, at work. And there's a bit of a mythology in the book trade that an individual bookseller or bookshop can break an author nationally. And quite honestly, this is absolute nonsense. There, there's all sorts of stories about this, but sometimes these people kick things off in a small way. It'll get to a journalist. And there was talk like that about Stoner by John Williams, about some bookseller in New York who talked about that. But it wasn't until Ian McEwan, um, who of course is published by Vintage in the UK, this as is John Williams, went on the radio and talked about that it really took off. Before that, it was a cult book. Um, and mixed works are rather like that. But over the years where I worked, over about five years, I sold loads and loads of mixed books. And this is, but interestingly, this is um, a solo edition of Spook Street. I'm jumping ahead of myself there, but we'll come back to that one. And I quite easily managed to get him a following very quickly because he's a, an addictive comfort read, but a good one. So he could have gone in my my comfort reads thread as well. Uh, maybe I'll do something else in him another time. And as his fan base was growing, one day I just emailed him and said, Mick, do you want to come to the bookshop I work in and we'll do an event? And he responded straight away and we set up an event and it was for the publication, I think, of um, Real Tigers. Um, it may have, may have been I think it was Real Tigers, which this was his first book for John Murray. This is the John Murray, um, this is the first edition. And so technically this is the third Slough House book, but it actually comes after Nobody Walks. And um, the livery, as you see, is quite different to the Soho one. And it's quite different to what um, John Murray would do later on. And I think I've got a flyer here for um, for the first um, the first event I did with Nick and um, this might have been the second because I've done two because um, that looks like the cover of Real Tigers the paperback cover there but anyway 43 44 people turned out which is a good turnout for an author who wasn't very well known then um, he was getting good um, reviews in the newspapers lots of attention you know people have their finger on the pulse and um, this time I was one of them <laughs> not always but I was that time and his cult was growing and really it was great um, to see a good turnout and mix a lovely guy in person um very witty very dry um very very unassuming and um he was so sort of grateful that um people had turned up uh, to talk to him about his work and um he was he was a just a fantastic guy um and i've remained friends with him ever since and then i got him back the following year and we did an event for um the book which i think was really his breakthrough was bre by which time his his following had sort of jumped up considerably and that was for Spook Street. So just to do a quick comparison, Spook Street um, in both editions there, the UK John Murray and the Soho version. How I got two, I don't know, but that's that's collecting for you. So <clears throat> I just want to break off a moment and pick out another book I've forgotten to get to get out, which is a book which I feel inspired the Slough House series. So bear with me, we have an edit cut. 
So the book that I feel possibly inspired the genesis of the Slough series is John Lacari's The Looking Glass War. Um, I'm not a massive Lacari fan. I've read about eight of them. And I do really love The Spy Coming from the Cold. I think it's sublime as a study of one man's bitterness and betrayal. You really can't fault it. It's the third smiling of us. Fantastic. This is my other fa favourite Lacari. And The Looking Glass War is um, related tangentially again to Smiley and the Circus. Um, and it's again about a group of outsiders and spying. They've been pushed into a little house and they're left out of the game and they want to make a comeback and they launch their own operation. It has really disastrous results. And this book has a completely doomy feel throughout, which is probably why I like it. I do like really doomy books. So if you've read the, the Slough House books, give this a try because you'll find interesting parallels with that. So, so check that out. But going back um, to Mick, um, something that he showed um, the audience, he handed these out the first time he came and did an event with me. Um, he, he handed up this picture. Um, you'll see that there. And he says, that is the real Slough House. It's the sort of brand building there. This is somewhere in London. He did say where well, he's never made a, um, any sort of bones about it. Um, so that's the real Slough House. Um, of course, there's no spies there, and he's not a spy, but that's the building that in inspired um, the, the slow house of the slow horses. So on the two events that I did with Mick several years ago, um, of course, I got him to sign all my books and he signed others for me when we met up afterwards in the pub, that sort of thing. And um, he, um, he wrote something in this one to really touch me because it's the one time where I felt I broke that mold and actually did make somebody into a cult figure, um, at least in the city I work in. I did it with, a, an, with another crime writer who I'll talk about again. Um, but I think this is the first time I've really spotted a bestseller, a big bestseller before he was due and, um, and sort of played a part in sort of breaking him nationally. So I'm very proud of that. Um, Nick wrote in this, um, this lovely message, you can see that. And it says um, to Steve, thanks so much for amazing book selling powers. Well, I was really touched by that. And of course, my book selling powers are amazing. They should be after 37 years. But, um, you know, given my head, I can usually do quite a good job of these sort of things. So I was really touched by that and, um, and really very, very kind indeed. Um, but as I was saying, I've got everything signed, but there was, there was a couple at um one of the events i can't think that it was the first or second one i did the second one must have been first was 2016 second one i think was early 2018 um so you know four or five years ago now and they had everything they had all the first they had the short story collection which is a very rare book which largely went to libraries it was pretty much produced for libraries never seen a copy before there is a new issue of the short story collection coming out um, people seem to think it's a first. There are some new stories in it, I believe, and it's got um, both Oxford, Zoe Boehm and Slough House stories in it. So um, so that's one to watch out for. So that's Mick Heron. Um, if you haven't read it, do. And as I say, things to watch out for. Le Carre's Looking Glass War, I think, inspired the series to a degree, though it's quite different in tone, similar conceptually. Um, watch out for Nobody Walks which is the true third um, or maybe fourth in the internal project. I, it's a while since I've reread them, but it is certainly set before Spook Streets. And people miss that one up because it's not published by Murray because this stuff is published by Murray. It's still only in Soho. So maybe, maybe not. Some people say it's not canon, but it is. Mick is very clever. He's a Weber-like writer. His books all connect in very clever ways because of course he did some novellas as well. You can see some of the Murray hardcovers and a couple of novellas there, which often blend really nicely into the main sort of narrative. And another book to watch out for is Reconstruction, which is apparently a singleton, but it features Bad Sam Chapman, who is in the latest Slough House books and he first appears in here. So that's worth watching out for. So a few tips there. Um, and just one quick aside, um, Ian Rankin, um, Scott's crime writer, has just finished off an, a, a manuscript that was left by um, William McIlvaney, Scott's crime writer who wrote some books about a character called Laidlaw. They're not very well known outside Scotland. Crime fans love them. And Ian Rank has just finished one off. So, so McIlvaney's probably become more famous now, but his son, um, Liam McIlvaney is, is a really good writer. I think he's a better writer. And I was out for a drink with Mick and a 
female crime writer called Sarah Hillary, who's a really, really nice lady. If you look like a good, sharp, taut female crime writer, give Sarah a try. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Mick. Hope you're out there and you're doing okay. It's been a while because of the pandemic. And I was out for a drink with them before Mick was doing an event at another bookshop. And this was summer, so it was just about two years ago before the pandemic. And I said, what's good? What have you two been reading? And they both instantly recommended The Quaker by Liam McIlvaney. And um, I'd recommend it too. I don't have a copy to hand. That's a really good one. So this is Outlaw Bookseller um, with a few tips there on Slough House and Jackson Lamb. The TV series is coming. We'll see. I know Gary Oldman's good, but I do have my misgivings. I can't see him as Jackson Lamb. I'd be interested to see what everybody thinks. And this is Outlaw Bookseller signing out for now.